All right, let's settle now for the news review. We'll be joined shortly by Dr. Kwame Asasante, Director for the Center for European Studies at the University of Ghana. But hey, we start from here with the papers that we have already, the Daily Graphic, uh, the Ghanaian Times, and more. Let's start with the Daily Graphic newspaper. And it says, uh, City Response Team Passes Out. And that's on page 16. Uh, of the Daily Graphic newspaper. Deputy speakers can vote. Supreme Court throws out review application. Another interesting story there. Let's quickly go to page 16 to get some details of uh, that. All right, here we are. And deputy speakers can vote. You would recall that Justice Abdullah had filed that uh, motion or that writ in uh, court. There was a unanimous uh, you know, decision against it, or was it a, f I think that one had a unanimous decision against it. It was the other case that had a 5-2 uh, decision. But here we are again, he sought a review and the result was the same. Now the review application challenging the Supreme Court's decision that deputy speakers of parliament can vote while pre pre presiding over proceedings and also be part of the quorum for decision making in parliament has failed. In a unanimous decision yesterday, a nine-member panel of the Apex Court dismissed the review application on the basis that it failed to meet the criteria for review as stipulated by the Supreme Court Rules 1996, that is CI 16. We are of the view, quoting the court, that the, the application falls short of the threshold for review. The application is therefore dismissed as unmeritorious, the court Held. So those are the details there. And of course, the review panel was presided over by Justice Jones Doche with uh, Justices Nene Amegacha, Professor Kote, Mariamo Usu, Avril Loveless Johnson, Gertrude Tokonu, Clemens Honyenuga, uh, Professor Mensa Bunsu, and Emmanuel Yoni Kulendi as members. Names that roll off your tongue because we all know them. Uh, let me welcome aboard Dr. Kwame Asa Sante, uh, who now joins us, Director for the Center for European Studies at the University of Ghana. Doc, a very good morning to you. I believe uh, you may have to unmute, Doc, because I did not hear what you just said, but I, I, I think you were responding. Yeah, good morning, Ben. Good. Is it okay now? Yes, please. Yes, please. Thank Everything you so much. Everything is fine here. Pardon me. Great. Great. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good yeah. to have you too. Anytime I see me? you, I know at least you're, you're doing well and that warms uh, my heart. Thank you for joining us for another morning. I was just referencing uh, the, the, the latest uh, ruling from, or the latest decision by the Apex Court concerning the Justice Abdullahi uh, review. And by nine to zero, uh, they have stuck to their guns and uh, fortified or reinforced the decision that was taken earlier. Did it come as any surprise to you? And ha what do you think this means uh, for our democratic practice and for our legislative practice, to be specific, moving forward? Um, thanks, uh, Ben. Uh, I was not surprised to hear this because right. experts, right. the lawyers, have said, and we're listening to them, and that is a very tall order for Justice Abulai to be able to be successful mm. uh, for his uh, mm. review application. So it didn't come to me as a surprise at all. Um, the other uh, bit of the question is that whether, uh, what the, how does it bode well for the country's democracy? For me, it's a good thing because any time the court interprets the law, it, uh, uh, it broadens the, the frontiers of democracy. Is strengthening the institutions and make things clearer. Uh, before this time, you saw the difficulties uh, with which we had uh, the system in Parliament with regard to who should preside as a deputy speaker, can he vote, and all that. Now uh, it is clear, and then uh, we are going to proceed with business in, in a very clear manner. Uh, I am very happy that the court has spoken and spoken forcefully. I uh, will take it and then move on. And uh, if there is anything that needs to be said, again, I think people, the, the court is an, always the forum for people to go and make their case. For me, I am cool with this and I support it. Let's move on and build a solid democracy for this country. 
And I guess moving on is exactly what we're going to do. In fact, Justice Abdullah himself had intimated that while some people had, uh, you know, a sliver of hope, if you like, uh, you know, some hope that they were clinging on to, that there could be some uh, change in the decision. He himself, going there, uh, had very little hope, but he, he went to test the law, which is the important aspect of what he did. That is why he says... Um, the progeny or the future will judge him. Posterity will judge him on that bit. But in other stories, let's consolidate democracy. NCC urges citizenry. Uh, that story is on page 17. The National Commission for Civic Education uh, has urged the citizenry to work hard to consolidate the country's democracy. And quoting uh, the statement, the Constitution is a living document and must be nurtured to grow. The nurturing of a living Constitution is vital for the sustenance of Ghana's democracy and the promotion of sustainable development. And all of this resonates with the rest of us uh, in the public space. We, we accept this. Uh, the only bit being that our constitution is what, 1992 to 2022, some 30 years old. And it still is uh, exactly what it was. Even when you look at the preamble, some will tell you that certain things have changed about who we are, what we stand for, what we are doing, uh, especially as we've entered the technological phase. And so many things are changing. Uh, how reflective Today is our constitution of who we are as a people. I know we've spoken about the constitution and tweaking it, but when you look at how it reflects us and the many issues that are cropping up, even in reference to the Justice Abdullah uh, review decision, what do you make of it? How does it reflect us as a people? Yeah, constitutions all over the world are subject to review from time to time. So if you see that there is a changing circumstances of the time. You need to also change aspect of the constitution to reflect the situation on the ground. And that is what we should be doing. Thank God uh, this country saw uh, wisdom in this. And during Prof. Mills' time, a commission was put together to, as it were, to go around the world, pick information, and see whether we can make changes. That document is lying fallow. I think if there is a need, which I think that the time has come, for us to change aspect of our constitution, we should not hesitate by revisiting that document, see what is needful to be changed, and then we change and make uh, progress. Because as you rightly put it, uh, there has been a change in uh, the dynamics, uh, the change in even society, and the constitution, which is a document you, that we use to guide the conduct and the processes that we have in our democratic uh, agenda, uh, all that need to be considered and then factored into the need to change aspect of the constitution to reflect the situation on the ground. I agree with you uh, strongly that the time has come for aspect of our constitution to change, to reflect the current situation. We need to do that, but mind you, we need to be very careful, not just change for changing sake, but we change and change to reflect a situation that will address a problem in our society. And that is how constitutions are amended and then maintained in a democracy. Mm. And maybe I'll wrap with this also very important uh, story. PAC refers 100 institutions to police for procurement law breaches, and there are more in the offing. But the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament has referred more than 100 public institutions in six regions, so there's more uh, coming up. Uh, to the Ghana Police Service for Investigation Stores uh, Prosecution. According to the committee, the institutions had breached some procurement laws flagged by the 2018 Auditor General's report. The institutions include universities, uh, district and municipal assemblies in the Bono Northern, Northeast, Savannah, Upper West, and Upper East uh, regions. And um, we've been hearing from the chairman, uh, Dr. James Kluche Aveji, who says they are determined uh, to ensure that the... Uh, they refer institutions for prosecution, especially when it comes to procurement irregularities. We've, we've had some scenes in recent times where some people even had to beg and confess uh, wrongdoing. Uh, uh, they've been sitting in Sunyani as well, starting last Monday. And uh, a member of the team, Mr. Dafiamekbo uh, Rossin, um, a member of parliament for Saudi, says there are a lot of procurement infractions that the Auditor General has flagged in the report uh, that the committee is considering. But we come back to the same place. It's like uh, the, the Auditor General's report on wastage, on corruption, on so many other scandalous activities of people in public office and people in, in, in institutions like the ones we are mentioning here. 
every year we come back to this point. Are we doing enough if every year we end up at the same place with the same, if not similar infractions? Uh, it's very unfortunate because uh, we as a people want to build a democracy. But in, democracy is supported by institutions and we keep on breaking institutions with impunity. I don't see how we can build a, a solid democracy if we are not prepared to build a very solid institution that will stand the test of, uh, the test of time. We need to be careful about this uh, because time and again, we talk about, you know, public account committee report. When I was a reporter in parliament, there are a lot of such reports, but it ended nowhere. Uh, but we must be bold and face it. And then people who have crossed the line, uh, you know, apply sanctions to that. That's all. That is the only way that we can salvage this democracy and deepen it so that it can stand the test of time. Otherwise, it will be a mere rhetoric and a mere exercise which will end up in futility. We need to be very careful if we want to consolidate this democracy and fight issues such as corruption, fight issues such as what uh, waste and all that. Otherwise, uh, then we are heading for some place that we are not comfortable with. You couldn't have said it any better, Doc. Now, let's just wrap with the Daily Graphic with the story on the back page. Opera Square Inferno. Don't put up structures on hydrants. Uh, fire service wants. The fire service performed, you know, very well in this latest inferno that, that hit uh, the Opera Square area, not for the first time. But here we are again with a plea. Do not put up structures on hydrants but people still are. You know, Doc, sometimes this is what makes me, this is what eats me up because we have laws, we have regulations. Don't build on waterways. Somehow people get permits to build on waterways. Don't uh, put up structures on hydrants. Somehow people manage to contract structures on hydrants. I mean, we keep doing this, we keep going back, um, uh, buildings keep getting burnt, people keep losing money, and especially in these times, when you look at some of those who are affected and, and the losses they are speaking of, they are also talking about the fact that some foreigners, I don't want to mention because of stereotyping any nationality, are also doing whatever they please in the system, which led to this fire. So a whole pot of or a whole basket of issues that we are not dealing with. And again, it comes back to bite us. Yes, it's simply because the capacity of the state is weak. In political science, when you have a state that is not able to what enforce laws, it is a weak capacity. Mm. All right, the regulatory capacity of the state, let's face it, is weak. That why do you come out with laws? Laws are meant to regulate the conduct of people, right. and that anybody who falls foul of the law is sanctioned appropriately. That's all. Why we always rush to pass a bill, and then later when it comes to enforcement, and then we drag our feet. What is it? Are we serious about it? I don't think we are serious. The capacity of the state in that regard is weak, pure and simple. Let's get into the Ghanaian Times uh, newspaper. And uh, it, it regurgitates other stories that have been put up by the paper, so I'll not go to those headlines. But President pays uh, tribute to late Kenyan President Mwai Kibaki. And uh, that story is in the middle spread of the paper. Uh, the Ghanaian Times missed the I at the end of Kibaki's name, but it gets it right in the story proper. Professor Atu Duncan urges world leaders to dialogue, mediate to end a Russia-Ukraine war. Uh, let me find out from you, Doc. Um, we know that Antonio Guterres, uh, the United Nations Secretary General, has been interacting with world leaders, including Vladimir Putin of uh, Russia. And we know about the latest moves, even Germany now ex accepting to you know, send firepower, armaments uh, to Ukraine. When you look at the flow of events, the Russians, it is clear, perceived to uh, walk over Ukraine very quickly. That has simply not happened. Even Mariupol, which has been reduced to rubble, is still standing. Um, what do you see in there uh, when it comes to international diplomacy? And, and what do you think the way forward could be? in resolving this seemingly intractable conflict? It's unfortunate we find ourselves in such a situation because the experience from Second World War, uh, I thought should have served as a very useful lesson so that uh, we don't do anything to get there. It's unfortunate the situation we have in Ukraine. Uh, the only way out is diplomacy. Right. And then they, they begin to what uh, talk to themselves and then 
uh, you know, the, 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 this is a time that you need allies uh, to speak to, allies of Russia, to speak to Russia, and then uh, use the diplomatic path to address this problem. Because, look, they themselves are suffering. I mean, Russians, so if you look at the sanctions and all that, they begin to bite, and then oh, European states have, you know, uh, come together, fight these things. They are cutting off power. They are refusing to get power from them and all that. So it is in the interest of Russia and, of course, the whole of Europe and the rest of the world so that uh, that this issue is dealt with and dealt with head on. Uh, diplomacy must work and then they should sit down, talk and address this so that we have a peaceful world. It's unfortunate because the effect for third world countries, including our country, is dire and we don't want to visit there. Let's get into the Daily Guide newspaper. Most of the stories already uh, looked at uh, previously or uh, today. So let's get on the international front. And Ivory Coast seizes record two tons of cocaine. <clears throat> uh, uh, that, is, that is shocking. Two tons of cocaine. Uh, the street value is about 41 billion CFA, the equivalent of some 67.7 .7 million dollars. Uh, the cocaine was seized, seized from traffickers this month in a police operation that took place in the commercial capital Abidjan and the port city of San Pedro, the Interior Ministry said in a statement on Saturday. Uh, nine people, including Ivorians and foreign nationals, have been arrested and investigations are underway. Uh, again, North Korea flaunts biggest missiles at nighttime military parade, and they've been talking about their missile capacity and how fast they want to improve on that. And maybe something that I would run by you, uh, Doc. Nigeria arrests suspected billionaire drug lord. And um, they have arrested a, suspect, a suspect described as a billionaire drug baron while on board a plane at Lagos uh, main airport. And, and this one, one Mr. Ukatu, uh, has uh, dominated the news, uh, even the BBC. Uh, any quick reactions to any of these international stories I've put forth? Anyone you'd like to react to? Yes, I'll tie the Nigerian one to that of what Cote d'Ivoire issue about drug. Uh, it's a difficult fight, but I'm happy uh, with the resolve of West African states to deal with uh, such canker. Uh, you know the effects of drug on youth and society entirely. So the, the steps that countries are taking, such as Nigeria and Cote d'Ivoire, I commend them. But it should not be just a day thing. We should continue and continue uh, forcefully. Uh, fear nobody and fight this battle because, look, that is one of the threats against democracy. Once you have money in the hands of what uh, drug barons and all that, it can disturb democratic experiments. And experience from Latin America and places of the world has uh, showed this to us. So uh, we need to be very careful and that these things we should not compromise at all. We should fight it with all our will and all our might and save this uh, fragile democracy that we have in the sub region. Let's move on to the Finder newspaper, explore what they have found. And uh, food and energy price shocks from Ukraine war could last for years. That's according to the World Bank. The story on page seven and tied to that, the story on page five. Wheat prices up 60% in Africa due to Russia-Ukraine conflict. That's according to the African Development Bank uh, chief. And that, of course, has some concern. If uh, We know that not all our economic woes are tied to Russia, Ukraine, and what is happening there. But some of them could have an impact, like we're seeing. And, Doc, wheat prices, interestingly, I've been saying that in Egypt, the word for bread also means life. And they get most of their wheat supply from the Russia-Ukraine area. So you can tell how they would be suffering in Egypt at this point in time. But uh, speaking of the impact of the conflict. What do you foresee? Looking at what we are seeing already, the shocks, what do you foresee could be the impact even after the war is over? You see, African state, let's face it, we have not prepared ourselves for such difficult situations. We always rely on foreign countries for support and all that. What prevents us from building a very solid economy that agriculture is held in high esteem? We have just relegated agriculture to the background. And those who have seen the need to what, build their countries along those lines, then they hold us to ransom. So um, 
Over the years, uh, since independence, we have not made any serious effort at what strengthening our agriculture, what business in Africa. So the little, uh, you know, problem that you have about countries that supply us with agriculture, you know, products and all that, then we have difficulty. Uh, it should be a useful lesson for us that we must up our game in the area of our agriculture so that we become food sufficient to ourselves here and then supply, uh, we, we produce what we need than rely on foreign countries that you don't know what will happen the next day. It is a great signal for us that we should not gloss over it. Mm. Let's get into some politics now. And um, the Republic Press newspaper reports uh, Nanakomia roots for Baumia. Alan, take it. But maybe before I get into that, uh, this escaped me. Going back to the paper I just ended with, uh, The Finder, we, we, we lambast um, those who don't get it right when it comes to our SOEs, and so I think it is important to highlight this as well. The Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority posts a 112.67 million Ghana CD net profit in 2020. It's a 39.41% drop compared to 185.95 million in 2019, but it still is profit all the same. And we ought to congratulate um, them. The Director General there is Michael Luguje, uh, Director General of the GPHA. Uh, let, let's now get to that story. Nanakumia roots for Baumia, Allen at Ticket. I want you to tie that into uh, some other things that uh, have been said. The same Nanakomiya has been saying that if an election were held today, the NPP would not be the most popular party. And uh, tie that again into what uh, Richard Amwakoba has been saying, that uh, the current economic conditions are 10 times worse than what, what they were under Mahama. So it, for those rooting for Mahama or for those saying that the former president should lead the NDC again, if he did... What can he do? I mean, if he did not perform then, now that the, the economic woes are 10 times worse, what would he be able to do? Can you digest these issues? I know I've, I've boxed you into a corner, but they are the political issues I want you to look at. How, how do you react to them? Um, one, I am not happy that parties uh, establish institutions, that's the rules, regulations, procedures, and all that, and they themselves try to undermine them. It's unfortunate. Right that affect the foundation of political party. Why am I saying this? MPP has said that the time is not right yet for people to root for others, to support others and all that. And why are we seeing all these things? Uh, a day will come, uh, today you hear this group saying that we support uh, this person, we are for this person and all that. Is it the time? Uh, they have forgotten about Do, do you think that, that, can, yes. that can lead to a splinter in the party? Not only a splinter in the party, but one, you are undermining the party's authority to issue instructions and then people obeying them. What is the point of you, you know, setting the rules and then breaking the rules? It doesn't make sense to anybody. Two. But, but, but in, this, in, in, in this instance, he is rooting for both of them. Uh, maybe one as presidential candidate and, and the other as, as, you know, one as flag bearer and the other as a, a vice, you know. The even one is bad enough. Even one is bad enough. Mm. Is it the time? The time now is that they should work and support the government to succeed. Because right. government right. or election or politics is nothing but what? Contest of ideas and then a referendum of your work. What work are you going to stand on? In other words, what record? Are you going to show to the world that you are capable of maintaining power and that people should give you their votes? You need to work and support the government. Look at the difficulty the government is facing. Have they thought about it? And they should make conscious effort to supporting the government to succeed. Then after that, you can begin to think about who should lead the party and all that. I'm afraid if they continue on this tangent, they are going to have all the, the candidates that they want, but the record will not be there to sell that candidate. It is important that they get this message and get it clear. Mm. Uh, do, one Dr. Mensah, who also is head of research at the presidency, has said that if elections were held today, the MPP would win the presidential with a slight margin, and for the legislative body, they would get 145 seats. Is, is that something you see currently when you look at the state of affairs? Uh, it's very interesting where the information is coming from. My good friend, Dr. Usimensa, who is the director of research office of the president. Uh, you know, what do you expect him to say? He will not be able to say that the party is losing if that is the case. 
because then where he sit. But that is not to doubt his research capacities and all that. But all that I'm saying is that the time now is not for you to determine who wins the next election. What you do to be able to get the support of the people to put you into office, that's what matters most. Because uh, research has shown that if you want to win an election in this country, you must build a solid economy. Uh, because p voters uh, decide on who to vote for based on the economic conditions of the country, irrespective of party tradition, ideology, and whatnot. Economy is crucial, followed by infrastructure development. What is the government doing with regard to infrastructure development? We can't take it from them that they are building some infrastructure network, but they need to double up their effort if that is to get to what they elected. And of course, issue of corruption is a third variable that influences voter choices. If you look at corruption report, yesterday I read about the US State Department report on human rights and corruption and all that. It's not good for the country. If you look at the Transparency International report on corruption, NDC managed corruption far better than the MPP. It is a fact. So these are indicators that influence voter choices. So if you are talking about where well, the next election, who wins and all that, you need to get the basics right. Otherwise, you won't even get there to canvass for votes and then win election. You, you, you really struggle. So the party must look at that. Build the basics now, and then you can uh, stand on it and campaign. Otherwise, uh, they should forget about the third term agenda. Uh, to wrap the conversation, the Daily Statesman says uh, Ghana Health Service don't ignore face masks completely. And Ghanaian publisher, finally, $350 million building uh, materials imported annually. $350 million, uh, you know, dollars worth of building materials imported annually. That's according to uh, Ascenso Buache, uh, Minister of uh, State. Does that surprise you? Come to think of it, $350 million worth of building materials. We, 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 we want to be I'm a country you. that is... See, are we ready to deal with the problems that we have in our country from internal, from within our system? We are not ready. We always think that there is uh, somebody elsewhere who can do it and do it better. And then government has also the position or the, the, the push of government with regard to these things have not been favorable at all. That we encourage these things and then we come back to blame the whole system. We need to put in place measures, proper policies that will deal with these things so that we encourage our people to produce the things that we import and then support our economy. If we want to continue to rely on import, import, I'm afraid, would destroy all local industries and then we always run for cover whenever there are shocks here, whenever there are crises here. But that is not the way to build a, a society for a very long time. We need to grow our own system here, make it solid so that the little that we import can come and augment what we have here and rely or make sure that the whole economy rely on foreign imports and all that. That will mm. not last. And that will not, uh, you know, support any future consolidation of the country's democracy. Doc, thank you so much for joining us for another morning uh, reviewing the papers. And we wish you the very best of the day. I'm grateful. I wish you well. Thank you. Well, coming up next, we have sports. And if you missed the thriller in Manchester, uh, we'll be telling you about that as well. Sports coming up next.